My name is Aston Pittman. I'm the founder and designer at GrooveTube Microphones. Also, we make audio products. GrooveTube is a 31-year-old company specializing in vacuum tube technology, but about 15 years ago, we began making studio products, microphones, another interest of mine. This is kind of the culmination of 31 years of working with tubes and ribbon mics, and this is our Velo 8. Uh, Velo is short for velocity microphone, that's more the technical term for a ribbon mic, and 8 being the pattern of the polar, the front and back pattern, figure 8. This is our Velo 8 microphone, as I was saying. We've been making the passive microphone for some time. Uh, this is the new active one. It has a tube preamp in it. There's a couple of things about ribbon mics in general uh, that you might call Achilles heels that we've addressed with the, this particular model. First, the ribbon motor itself is very unique in several ways. We have two magnets in the structure, and I'm pointing out here, and they have a shape to them that we call it the rooftop shape. They're flat on one side and they're pointed on the other. That allows us to focus the magnetic field right on the ribbon. It also creates an acoustical collection chamber like this, so to speak, so that we pick up more uh, energy and then get more output from the dual neodymiums. This motor uh, has a lot more output than any other kind of ribbon mic, just from a fundamental standpoint at this level. We're gonna do other things downstream with this design to increase the output. One thing uh, we do is have a transformer with either a 75 or a 300 ohm tap on it, so it gives me more output. Uh, but the most interesting thing about this, one problem with ribbons is they're very fragile, they can break. And if they break, uh, you have uh, a long wait time until you can get that ribbon replaced. We made a, a ribbon that mounts on a PC board with a plug-in, and it screws out with four screws. When you buy one of our microphones, and I could show you one of the packages here, you get an actual ribbon that's a sealed in an, an anti-static bag ready to be installed. Should you blow your ribbon, it's eight screws, about 10 minutes in a Swiss Army knife. No soldering. You change your own ribbon out in the studio. Exactly the same as the ribbon that was in the original mic, tensioned and built the same way. You take the old ribbon, you put it back in this box and mail it to me. Uh, we will re-ribbon it for you and send it back for a charge of $50, including the, the freight. So every mic comes with an extra ribbon. Should that ever happen, you won't lose your... And that's unique. Nobody's doing that in the industry. Um, of course, even a ribbon mic built like this with more output than the rest of the ribbon still doesn't compete against a condenser mic for output, which means that many people buy ribbons and plug them into their existing console or preamps, and they're unimpressed because they literally have very low output. They don't have enough gain, and, and a big ignored aspect of front-end audio is they don't have the right impedance. They're not loaded correctly. Ribbons have a very low impedance output, and when you load them with a very high impedance um, preamp, like a two or 3,000 ohm preamp, you're gonna get a really wimpy sounding microphone. One thing we've done with our preamps and, and, and the Supri here, the stereo unit preamp, which is kind of an evolution of our Vipri, our variable impedance preamp, the whole theory is that the impedance you load the microphone with has a big, big uh, it, it, uh, influence on how the microphone works. Not how it sounds, it will sound similar, but it will reach different, it'll change the polar pattern on how you load it. In the old days, ribbon mics at Capitol Records, for instance, they might have 50 ohm or 150 ohm output on the microphone. They were going into an input console that had a matching input load. Today, the popular theory is that your source should be 10 times the load. So you would think if it was a 150 ohm or a 200 ohm microphone, by traditional audio engineering recommended standards, you should have a 2,000 or 3,000 or higher source. And that's what the thinking has been. But really, what re people keep going back and buying these old mic trees made in the 60s or the 50s or the 70s, because that wasn't the popular thinking then. Then it was more about matching, not making something 10 times higher. Um, if you imagine a power amp that's going to put out 100 watts into an 8 ohm speaker and you plug in an 80 ohm speaker, you're not going to get anything out of the power amplifier. And that's kind of what happens at the transducer level, like a ribbon or a condenser mic, that drives a preamp. So one of the key features of our Supri is we have a selectable impedance front end that I can change the way the microphone loads. And that changes the way the microphone sounds. Right now we're listening to the tube mic 
version of our ribbon mic. We've added in this microphone a special seven pin connector, a tube power supply, and inside that microphone is a tube preamp. So this is a ribbon mic with a tube preamp that kicks up the gain another 20 dB, and you now have a microphone that has the output level of any condenser mic or more so, and it has a loading characteristic that will be impervious or less so to the highly uh, in high impedance type inputs that are common out there. Now, if you're, you want to go the full signal chain and go way back to the 50s and the 60s and get those kind of resonant uh, resolution, high resolution, warm feeling recording tracks. You need a ribbon mic and you also need a console or a preamplifier that loads it like the old days. That would be down here, our stereo unit preamp. Now this is a stereo unit, we're only demonstrating one side of the mic preamp right now and I'll give you another little feature of that. But we can load it at 1200, 600 or 300 ohms. Each of those are going to have a relatively different effect on how the microphone works. Um, the other thing about our microphone I'll show you is the way we align the ribbon in the microphone changes the way each side sounds. If you take a ribbon mic and you put it perfectly in the center of its magnetic field, it will put out a perfect figure eight. That means it sounds the same on both sides. But as most people don't use figure eight very much, they use cardioid mostly when they're recording, they point it at the guitar, they point it at the microphone, at the vocalist. Um, so we wanted to have a ribbon mic that had a little more versatility. So we, we intentionally misalign our, our ribbon inside the magnetic field so that each side sounds a little different. I'll give you a demonstration you can actually hear on tape. I'm going to sing a little something. I don't know what. Ah, <laughs> uh, you must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. Sigh is still a sigh, they say. You must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss. So slightly characteristically, I don't know which one, you'll have to tell me. One's going to have a little more highs, one's going to have a little smoother top end. You must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss. You must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss. So two different sides of the microphone give you a dual purpose microphone. You can use it for guitar on one thing, it might sound better, and vocal on another.